The other day I was trying to build a NeoVim Trojan virus, and I was messing around with importing different Lua modules, and I ended up importing the entire Love2D graphics library. And I ended up making this interesting little game where you defend your Vim turret, your IDE turret, it's like a tower defense game, from bloatware. And the reason I used those bloatware assets is I was offline, I've been traveling a lot, and I just had like a Figma document with all of them. I use them to clickbait people into watching things, especially like Ocaml and Zigbros, they're the easiest targets. I was working on this little game, and initially you would aim with your mouse, but I changed that pretty quickly, because someone in the comments of the video said, why not like make it use the Vim bindings, that would make a lot of sense. And yeah, they're right, they're completely right. And I also, I don't have a mouse, that was the other main reason, so it was getting pretty hard to control this little game. And the reason I used Lua, is because, it, well, it came out of this NeoVim debacle, but I wanted full backwards compatibility with NeoVim and the Vim API in case I ever want to integrate the config and have like the two things be able to talk to each other so you can set up your NeoVim to interact with the game. Um, no, I'm kidding, that would be insane. It's just because I saw this one video on YouTube about how the game Bellatro was made in Love 2D. And if there's one thing I know about game development, it's that the idea, the programmer, those mean nothing next to the framework you choose to build your thing in. That that means everything. I also didn't want to use C++ or Rust just because it takes too long. Rust is like the error handling is kind of a headache for small projects. And C++, I've used OpenGL before to make a rendering engine and oh my god. I don't want to write 300 lines of C++ only for it not to compile into hello world in the middle of the screen because my free type version is slightly out of date. So here's the actual game running. If I open a Lua file, you can see it's shooting colored text. I just wrote like a basic syntax highlighter. Highlighter, So I can go boom, go to the end, G to go down, like all the Vim motions are supported. And then I can shoot at different things. Oh, here comes a Svelte. This is an interesting little Easter egg. Because Svelte compiles into optimal JavaScript, when you kill a Svelte, it'll burst into JavaScript. And those things are dangerous, they're fast. I was kind of considering this as like, a little game for maybe middle managers or like the less intelligent people, the HR department maybe in the in the programming world who, who can't really learn to code themselves fully, but it could help them like understand the culture a little bit more. So maybe they'll be more empathetic before they assign you to work on an Angular code base. But who knows, that might just be a pipe dream. This project might be dead in the water. You can see also I added a couple other little IDEs you can use. There's tons more to add, like Emacs and everything, but say Sublime is like a little bit slower and you have to use the mouse, which is just so bad. Or there's Claude, which it shoots a lot of bullets, but it's kind of hard to aim. You can see it's like not really aiming in the direction of the cursor. Like it seems like it would be effective. It's, it's doing a lot of coding, but it's not all that high quality either. So yeah, just a basic little thing. I created the probably the worst and also one of the most impressive, mentally I think, Vim macros of all time during this project. So you can see there's two screens. There's the main thing and then there's the shop. And I was having to jump between working on them and I cannot be bothered to like open up the app and then hit escape every time I wanna to go to the shop if I'm working on the shop. That's like three seconds of time. Three seconds is a very long time. So what I decided to do, you can see right here at line 11, self.open not 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 false. You might have an idea of what I'm doing. My macro, if I run it, at O, looks like that didn't work for some reason. Let's re-record it because I think it's a funny macro and it's pretty simple. So let's delete the extra knots. You could, in theory, use some fancy regex to replace false with true and true with false or you could store it in a temporary register. But what I did, because I was like on the plane and sleep deprived, is I just added a bunch of nonce before it. So here's my macro. Before we start, I'm gonna go M, capital A, and that'll add a global mark. The capital marks can be between files. And then I'm gonna start recording, QW, and then I'm gonna go M, B, to keep track of this position so we can jump back to it. Then backtick A, and that'll jump right there. Go insert mode, type not, escape, and then I'm gonna write. Because if we're on another file, we want this to hot reload. 
And then let's go back to the mark we were at. I think you can actually do that with back tick, back tick, or quote, quote, but I'm gonna do back ticks because quotes, single quotes, will take you to the line of the mark, but not the mark itself. So yeah, back tick, back tick takes you to the last placed mark. And then just to clean this up so we don't have anything, any weird extra things, I'm gonna do DELM, which stands for delete mark, and then B, and then close. So if we run this, at O, you can see it appends a knot and then jumps right back there. And it should even work across files. So if I go at O, you can see it flickered briefly and there's an extra knot. Yeah, so someone in the comments, please point out a better way to do this. I was wrestling, like trying to swap registers all around and I almost got it working, but then I was like, what if I just keep adding knot? And then once there's like 30 of them, then I go through and clear it out. It's a pretty easy, like just S slash not slash slash G and then it's gone and then I can language format it down. But yeah, that was my solution to it. One thing working in Lua, which was really surprising to me because we get so much propaganda these days, I won't say any names, but type safe enthusiasts. And there's nothing wrong with type safety, but for beginners working on like smaller to medium projects like this, it really does slow you down a lot to use C++ or Rust. And it's just like in, in this Lua project, I was committing egregious sins. I was like dividing by zero without checking, which cost me a bunch of time to debug and referencing global state like 10 levels deep. I just call dot blank, dot blank, dot blank all the way down and just hope. Um, I would mutate all this global state, passing like crazy references all over the place to things. It's like a nightmare to reason about, but it's kind of awesome because I can just like push past any problem and kind of instantly solve basic things. And it actually, it, it it's not that bad to work on. I can see how it would get bad if the code was much longer and then maybe I'd use some kind of typed version of Lua, but yeah, the, the tables and everything in it is just a very nice language to work in. I feel like in Rust, if I wanted to check collisions on something, I could not do something as easy as iterating through I pairs and then just checking a collision method. It would, you'd probably be like unwrapping an optional kind of six error nested arc mutex contained double serialized thing that has like four different traits that you have to satisfy for it from all these different conflicting libraries and the bounds are never satisfied for each other. It's just like a headache to do that. Not that Rust isn't good, and I can see how on bigger projects, like, definitely it would be useful, but yeah. It felt a little wrong at first, like, stepping on baby kittens to do that global state and setting things equal to null, but like baby kitten stepping, you, you get used to it, and some people even grew to enjoy it. In the future, I want to definitely expand this and add more bloatware frameworks, maybe even, like, a back-end mode where you're fighting against Go and Rust and uh, Node and Bun and even Ruby, maybe historical so i and i want to add also power-ups to vim motions that are more unusual so it'll like incentivize you to do things that you wouldn't normally do kind of like hard time.mvim if you've heard of that and you can maybe attach a thing where like your bullets will be come piercing and also there's like a whole bunch of things to do with the code it shoots like it could have different themes do different things like group box or whatever and there's tons more ides to add i might make this open source at some point so people can like submit an IDE and it'll be like pretty easy to configure you know what I mean like even if you don't know Lua or you're like a beginner you can just submit a PR with your favorite editor and just like add an image and add like different stats and the functions to define how they shoot are pretty simple that's about it for this one honestly um, thanks for 10k that's pretty crazy I've always wanted to be in a major public scandal and you guys are helping me get there so that's awesome Thanks to everyone who comments, especially other YouTubers, the consistent ones. You guys know who you are. I read all your comments. You rule. If anyone got offended by me roasting Zoxide or whatever, or in the edit command video roasting you, that's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm making fun of people in the community who are like that because if you think about it, it's like such a ridiculous thing to have like a hyper optimized workflow and then go to someone else and be like, um, Mine is 5% better, so yours sucks. It's just like, I really don't care what you use at all. It's completely fine if you use Zoxide. I kind of like it sometimes too. That's about it. Um, this video is not sponsored. Don't do that here.